you can't help change what you fear. Ah. You know what I'm saying? So so some of the people that we deal with, you know, they 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 <laughs> they, they are they can be scary, they can be rough, but we understand that if we want to make an impact, we can't fear what we're trying to help. Can you believe it? I'm still here. That's right. Living in this tent on top of this rooftop for 100 days from November the 20th to February 28th, bringing to you the awareness that you need about the gun violence on the south side of Chicago and trying to raise as much money as we possibly can to build a much needed center on this block called O Block. It's called O Block because it's named after a young man named Odie Perry who was shot and killed. The gangs picked up the O in his name and started calling it O Block. We decided we're going to keep the O, but we're going to change it to Opportunity Block. I want to thank Fox for giving me this opportunity every single day, every single evening to bring to you my rooftop revelations where I discuss my own thoughts, my own opinions and viewpoints as it relates to what's going on in our country and in our city. I'm really thankful today I have a very special friend, my brother, my assistant, Pastor TJ, who's here with me today. And we're going to jump right in. TJ, thanks for being with us. I know it's cold at night, right? It's cold. It's real cold. <laughs> the wind is blowing, so I, I hope they don't hear all this wind. But, you know, if you do, please forgive us. We want to jump in on a subject that's really important. You know, there's a lot of kids who've been getting shot. And, you know, one of the things that I've been passionate about and I've been telling you about, we've been planning about, is that while I've been on this roof, God has really been uh, speaking to my heart about kids, yes. children, and teenagers. And... You know, just recently we had five uh, kids who in less than 24 hours who were shot and killed. And I believe, TJ, and I want to know what you think, that what we need to have happen is that we need our churches to step up big time. In Chicago, on the south side and west side, we have churches everywhere. Everywhere. And we have a lot of great pastors who pastor these churches. But I'll be the first to say, even me, yeah. even you, even our church, we've not done enough yeah. for young people. Yeah. Do you think that maybe we can solve a lot of these issues with the violence if our churches would get more engaged? Definitely, definitely. And, and Pastor, it's, it's one thing to get engaged. It's another thing to get engaged together. Oh wow! Um, you can you can have a collection of churches, but having a connection of churches is totally different. And so I think what happens is we get caught up in being in our own islands and our own silos. And I think it's one of two parts. One is you know a little bit of ego, and two I think that sometimes we wonder if God is really big enough to handle our work and somebody else's. Wow! And so um, I believe that He is, and I believe what the Scripture says about if you're faithful over another man's work, He'll make sure He gives you your own. And so I think that we have to get to a place to where we can really say, you know what? Let's get plugged in to somebody that's already doing the work. Let's not recreate the wheel, and then let's go ahead and help save our city and our young people. Yeah, you know, you know, I've been thinking really hard and long about uh, what we need with uh, to do for these young people. Yeah. But how critical is it if churches? Don't step up and get more involved. Just how critical is it? I think it. I think it's extremely critical because I think that's where the hole. That's where the hole is. That's where the void is. Um, our job is to step in and fill the gap and give direction. So if there's no church, there's no direction, and people become a law unto themselves. And that's what we don't want to happen. And so um, I believe that places like New Beginnings and other churches in the uh, in our city, if we come together, I think that we have the tools and the blueprint to help give guidance and to help give instruction and also to help love on these teenagers and these young people in areas and in ways that they're not seeing at home. And, you know, our job is to love and to show love. And I think that once we operate in our proper place, we can add that to the table to help bring them out of what they're in. Yeah. Do, do, do you think that churches are going to have to make some adjustments and some changes? Definitely. Yeah. I think I think we really got to start thinking out of the box. I think we got to start getting out of the box beyond the four walls, which is what I'm so grateful that, that this church does. Um, I think that we're really going to have to start looking at ourselves in the mirror and saying, what is my priority? And, and am I truly and truly, truly, truly concerned about what's going on in my city? And if I am, what am I doing to make sure that I'm playing my part to make that change? Yeah, you know, I think it's vitally important that 
uh, the churches get more engaged, that we collaborate even more, that we totally have to get out of the box. That's one of the reasons why we created Project Hood because we wanted an avenue to reach more young people. And we wanted an opportunity for our church to be able to express that avenue and, and work in that avenue you know, to engage and win more young people. And you know what, Pastor, the thing that I love about, you know, the church and Project Hood, and I'm a firm believer in this, you can't help change what you fear. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So so some of the people that we deal with, you know, they they <laughs> they they are they can be scary, they can be rough, but we understand that if we want to make an impact, we can't fear what we're trying to help and what we're trying to change. And so we get our hands dirty. You've taught us to to, to get out there not be fearful because once you show love it will be reciprocated because that may be the first time that they've ever received it and seen it in their own eyes absolutely yeah. you know in close i just want to say you know i really do believe that the local church is the hope of the world yeah. and in our culture we've always had the church in the forefront uh when we were without colleges it was yes. the church that started yeah. hbcus when when we needed the civil rights movement it was yeah. the church um, that was in the forefront. Yeah. The abolitionists uh, uh, abolishing slavery, yeah. it was the church that was in the forefront. And now here we are, uh, removed from those things, yeah. but it's just as critical, just as dire. And I really do believe that just like in the past, how the church was in the forefront of bringing about transformation, uh, I really do believe we're gonna need the church to step up Absolutely. big time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, man, thank you, thank you uh, for sharing your ministry with me and teaming in ministry with me. Thank you are a flat out bona fide preacher, teacher and friend. And I appreciate you and all the things that you do thank you so and all the blessing. support work that you give. Listen, it's been a blessing. We believe that we got to get the churches involved. So pray for us to ha- make that happen. If we're ever going to see transformation happen in our community, we have to get these churches, as Pastor TJ said, to get out the box. Listen, it's been great. It's been awesome. Wonderful talk and discussion. Thank you to Fox for giving me this opportunity. Again, I really, really appreciate it. And like I always say, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Until then, peace.